Hi, I'm Dr. Eli Whitney, a cardiologist at the Heart and Vascular Institute of Texas. I'm here to talk about Repatha, a new cholesterol-lowering medication, which is a PCSK9 inhibitor. Basically, PCSK9 affects how the liver processes LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol. In 2003, a rare genetic mutation was found in the general population in which there is an absence of PCSK9. This isn't a bad thing. People who have this mutation have extremely low cholesterol levels. These people commonly run total cholesterol levels between 60 and 100 points. Another positive note is the main clinical finding in these people as a group is an extremely low risk of developing a heart attack or stroke. In fact, in general, they outlive the general population by several years because of this low risk of cardiovascular disease. Nor do they have any increase in risk of having dementia or death from cancer. The LDL cholesterol receptors on the surface of the liver take up the LDL cholesterol particles from the blood and remove them from the body. The net action of the PCSK9 protein is to substantially increase LDL particle levels in the body. This caused a dramatic increase in LDL cholesterol and triglycerides. Removing the PCSK9 protein causes a dramatic decrease in LDL cholesterol and triglycerides. The mechanism of action with statin drugs such as Lipitor, Crestor, Zocor, and Mevacor is to increase the LDL receptors which lowers cholesterol and triglycerides. This is the same mechanism of action of the PCSK9 inhibitors. Lipitor, Crestor, and Zocor have been shown to lower the risk of heart attack, stroke, and all-cause mortality. Amgen, a pharmaceutical company, shortly after the discovery of this mutation and its powerful effect on cholesterol, developed a monoclonal antibody which binds up the PCSK9 protein in a person's blood. This effectively removes it from the body. By taking a shot with this new medication, it effectively changes a person's cholesterol metabolism to that of a person who has the natural genetic mutation, and it lasts for two weeks before another injection is needed. In 2017, the Evolocumag and clinical outcomes in patients with cardiovascular disease study was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. In this study, they took 27,564 patients with established cardiovascular disease and LDL cholesterol levels 70 points or higher who were receiving the maximum statin dose available or that was tolerated. Established cardiovascular disease includes people who have previous heart attacks, angioplasties, bypass surgeries, blocked arteries in the neck or legs. They split this group of patients into two groups. One group was given an injection of Repatha, 140 milligrams every two weeks. The other group received a placebo injection. Baseline total cholesterol levels were 168 in both groups. The baseline LDL cholesterol levels were 92 points in both groups. The baseline HDL cholesterol level was 44 in both groups. The baseline triglycerides were 134 in the Repatha group and 133 in the group that received the placebo. On average, the LDL cholesterol levels fell 59% in the Repatha group down to 30 points. It was unchanged in the placebo group. The patients were followed for up to three years. Cardiovascular deaths, non-fatal heart attacks, and strokes were reduced 20%. Bypass surgery and angioplasties were reduced 22% with Repatha. As you can see from the curves in the graph, the longer a person took Repatha, the greater the reduction in risk of adverse cardiovascular events. Repatha was very well tolerated. Roughly 12.5% of patients in both groups dropped out of the study. 
there were no differences with respect to risk of developing diabetes or developing dementia. Muscle problems occurred in 5% of the people receiving the Repatha and 4.8% of the patients receiving the placebo. Significant muscle breakdown occurred in 11 patients receiving the placebo and in 8 patients receiving the Repatha. The only difference in side effects was injection site reactions which occurred in 1.6 percent of the patients receiving the placebo and in 2.1 percent of the patients receiving Repatha. When they looked at the patients with the lowest cholesterol levels at the start of the study and compared them with the patients with the higher cholesterol levels, the reduction in risk of adverse cardiovascular disease was virtually the same. In other words, the lower you get the LDL cholesterol, the lower the risk of adverse events. Putting this all together, if you have established cardiovascular disease, and despite being on high dose statin, or as much statin as you can take, and your LDL cholesterol is above 70, you will benefit from therapy with Repatha. If you're at high risk of getting cardiovascular disease because of high cholesterol, and do not get control with maximally tolerated statin therapy, you may also benefit from a PCSK9 inhibitor. The side effects of the medication are similar to getting a placebo, except for a slight increase in risk of having an injection site reaction, 1.6% risk with placebo, and 2.1% with Repatha. The effect of this medication on muscles is identical to getting a placebo. I hope this educational program has helped you understand Repatha and the PCSK9 inhibitors and how they can help you clinically. I'm Dr. Eli Whitney with the Heart and Vascular Institute of Texas.